Hello and welcome back. It's the end of August, which means we're coming to the end of the summer beta season. Today, Apple released iPadOS 26 Developer Beta 8 and Public Beta 5. And the day I've been dreading has finally arrived because there's not really anything to talk about in this release. This update was really just bug fixes, which is both good and bad. Good because bug fixes are really what we want at this point, but bad because none of the issues I brought up in my beta 7 video were addressed in this release, which is mostly fine, fine-ish, but as I've been working on my review, I'm using my beta devices connected to a monitor more and more, and this stupid bug, glitch, whatever you want to call it, moving windows between your display and your iPad is really just annoying the crap out of me. In the meantime, I decided I would take this video to talk about a couple of smaller features and changes in iPadOS 26 that I haven't addressed in any of my videos so far that I wanted to bring to your attention. So let's go ahead and jump into it. The dock is one of the more powerful UI elements in iPadOS, as it used to be and kind of still is your springboard for multitasking. The best way to get an app into your workspace is to pull it from the dock. And while you've been able to fill your dock with apps, there are of course limits. And iPadOS 26 actually expands that limit of how many apps you can have in your dock. Now I believe this will vary per device size, but for example, my 13 inch iPad Pro that's still in iPadOS 18, I can fit 21 apps in the dock, including suggested apps and the app library icon. On my M1 iPad Pro that's on iPadOS 26, I can fit 30 apps with those same conditions. Now, this looks a tiny bit ridiculous in portrait, even on the larger size iPads. But I know some of you like to fill your dock to the max. So I guess go nuts. I don't listen to a ton of podcasts anymore. I'm kind of burned out on a lot of tech podcasts. But if you are a heavy podcast listener, there's a good chance you're probably taking advantage of the different speed options that a podcast client offers. Now, in Apple Podcasts, if you swipe over on the little speed picker here, you'll see you get the slider that lets you get at different speeds that are in between the preset intervals in the app. So if for some reason, 1.5x isn't good enough for you, but 1.7x is, well, now you have that option. And while you're in there, there's also this enhanced dialogue option that should boost the voices in your podcast if that's something you need. The Clock app adds custom snooze durations for alarms you may set on your iPad which you may want to do for any number of reasons. I actually use my iPad as an alarm from time to time, even though nothing beats the experience of the Apple Watch here. It's great to have those silent alarms that don't wake anyone else up. So when you go into the Clock app and actually create the alarm, at the bottom, when you turn on the Snooze option, there's this control, which is unfortunately kind of cut off here, that lets you set the snooze duration between 1 and 14 minutes instead of the fixed 9 or 10 minutes I believe it is today. I haven't really mentioned the battery menu in any of these beta videos, but it did receive a pretty nice UI overhaul in iPadOS 26. Now, unfortunately, we don't get some of the nice features that we're getting on iOS, like the adaptive charge option, where the system will automatically tweak performance to extend your battery life, or that nice option to display how long it'll take for your device to charge on the lock screen. Those two things would be great. Not sure why they're not in iPadOS. The old battery screen really did need a touch up, even if, you know, all things considered, there's not really much different from a functionality perspective. You're still able to drill down into the different days and see how much relative power an app was using. But at least now the app tries to give you a little more insight as to when you've been using an app more on a particular day, if you're trying to figure out why your battery life isn't really what you want it to be. So Control Center, which got a pretty decent overhaul last year, there is now a control for directly creating a new reminder. Big deal, right? Well, instead of going with something like Notion, which I think a lot of people use, or at least a lot of people on YouTube use for project planning and whatnot, I just use Reminders. It's free and it's built in and it works really well. And it's gotten better once Reminders, I believe it was last year, added this nice column view that isn't half bad for tracking different types of projects. For me, I track different apps I'm working on, videos I want to make, as well as blog posts I want to write. You can nest reminders in here as well, and it ends up 
being a pretty nice little setup for project tracking. So that's going to do it for this week's kind of quick beta video. As always, if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, that would help me and the channel out a bunch. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care.